All right, UFC 302 more than delivered. From insane out of nowhere finishes, back and forth battles, and a legend even further cementing himself in the GOAT conversation. And in this video, I'll be breaking down all the major moments that happened in this card. Let's get into it. So the prelims of this one kind of came and went without any huge major moments. One thing to highlight is Jonathan Almeida with a dominant victory over Alex Romanoff, proving that the level of grappling that he's able to bring into the heavyweight division is just plain dominant. I know that for me, after that TKO loss to Curtis Blades, I was one of the people thinking that maybe it makes sense for Almeida to take some time away and go back down to light heavyweight where his size is even more of an advantage. But when you see how easily he was able to dominate the grappling exchanges against Romanov, and with him now calling out Cyril Gaon for a fight in September, there's still very much a path for Almeida to make his way back into the title picture. Another crazy moment in this card was Kevin Holland getting rocked, knocked down, and then taking full advantage of the fact that the fight was now on the ground by throwing up a deep arm bar, actually so deep that he completely snapped all of Jacek's arm and Ola Jacek actually not only didn't tap, but proceeded to protest the fight to the referee immediately after. So had this one not gotten stopped, he was, I guess, fully prepared to go into the next round with one arm, which is just absolutely insane. And then one fight that I was very excited about, the co-main event between Paolo Costa and Sean Strickland. As we know, most of Sean Strickland's fights tend to go to the decision, but I thought given the circumstances and a five round fight against a guy like Paulo Costa, who is not not known to have good cardio whatsoever. If there was a guy Sean was going to be able to get out of there before the time's up, it was going to be Paolo. And as for Paolo, since he was able to find a couple holes to exploit in the matchup between him and Robert Whitaker, I figured it's not unreasonable to say that he would be able to do the same against Sean Strickland. Paolo opened up in this fight with a couple heavy leg kicks, but after that, the first couple rounds were pretty much a bit of a jab fest back and forth. Paolo centering most of his attacks to the body and Sean mixing it up, front kicks to the body and jabs to the face as he usually does. I thought the two of these guys split the opening rounds. And from there, Sean was able to effectively outpoint Paolo, specifically with that front kick to the body. Paolo came out with a varied approach, but when you think about the way Paolo tends to fight, the idea that he was going to be able to outpoint someone like Strickland, who is so good at outpointing his opponents, was just kind of unrealistic. And while Paolo did come out way more aggressive in the later rounds, it was just too little too late at that point, and Sean had already kind of done enough to edge out the victory. Now, I know it's early, but I've already seen a lot of people complain about the decision. Obviously, Sean ended up winning in a split decision, which in all honesty, I think makes a lot of sense. I think this actually was a surprisingly close fight. I figured if Sean was going to win by decision, it was going to be pretty cut and dry, and he was going to win by jabbing Costa, getting out of range, and probably not getting it hit by too much. But Costa, surprisingly, came out with a very similar game plan and made this a relatively close fight. There was a solid two, three rounds in there that were kind of a toss up you could kind of go either way with but in the end i had sean winning by a point and i think the right guy got his hand raised in the end and then now for the main event islam makashev versus dustin poirier this is one of those fights where i think a lot of people had hope that dustin was going to be able to pull it off maybe potentially by guillotine but realistically the skill gap between these two fighters was always evident and that's exactly what we saw on saturday night dustin came out very confident but from early on in this fight, Islam showed exactly why he's the champion. Because one of the big differences between Islam and Khabib is, while yes, they're both very grappling heavy and they're both amazing on the ground, Islam is willing to engage in the striking, not just enough to prepare you for the shot, but enough to hurt you so that when he does take you down, it comes from absolutely nowhere. And even when Dustin was able to stuff the takedowns, Islam was just relentless, continuing to come forward and actually outboxing Dustin in many points of this fight. Dustin definitely did have his moments where you saw how high level his boxing is, but but Islam was just a step ahead of him in that department and really in every department of the fight. The closer we got to the end of this one, we saw Dustin was able to fight out of a lot of really compromising situations in this fight. And the closer we got to the end, it felt like the momentum was moving further and further in favor of Dustin, getting more confidence in the boxing scenarios and even getting in Islam's face to show him that he's not afraid. But in the end, Islam was able to do what him and only a few other fighters can do, and that is pull off the impossible, find a way to get the finish when it seems like all else has failed. Altogether, this was a very entertaining any fight. I think Islam won pretty much every round up until the finish. There was one round that was close that maybe you get to Dustin, but there's no mistaking who the better fighter was between the two. And despite that, I still think Poirier put on a great performance for himself. And I know that, you know, from his perspective, it's kind of like, why keep going if you don't think you can win the title? But I think over the past few years, he's gained so much favor with the fans that if the guy wants to, I'm sure there's more than a couple big time money fights out there if he chooses to continue. So there you have it. UFC 302. Very exciting card. The first kind of big, major your card we've gotten since 300 let me know in the comments below what did you guys think of this card and if you're a subscriber to the channel be on the lookout for monday june 3rd at 12 o'clock i'm probably going to do a live stream during the michael chandler versus conor mcgregor initial kickoff press conference in dublin and uh yeah should be a lot of fun thanks for watching